Hey guys, Zach is here with yet another Star Citizen ship tour. I got the newly released uh, Aegis Dynamics Redeemer, which is the starship that was created by um, regular Star Citizens like yourself for the next great starship contest that ended in July, I think it was. Um, it is finally hangar ready. It is on sale. Um, I did trade in my Cutlass Red, which I my most recent video I just put out there so I'm not gonna put a disclaimer anymore <laughs> saying that I'm not ordering any more or I'm not buying any more ships because uh, that doesn't seem to work out very well I will say I think I'm, I'm good now and I'm making a list of stuff to buy once you know with in-game credits once the game actually comes out so hopefully I can stave off any more spending there or whatever but I don't mind helping out SIG um, because the game looks to be amazing um, they just debuted the FPS demo at uh, PAX Australia earlier today um, and it looks fantastic along with the Gladius commercial I think and they showed some more of the Redeemer um, but this ship looks fantastic it's basically a gunship slash assault boarding ship so it's heavily armed, it's got some missile armaments as well as you see the two man turrets uh, on top of the nose gun here as well. And it's got space for an uh, assault crew of about six marines or pirates. I prefer pirates myself, but uh, yeah. It looks fantastic in engine, I'm so glad. Uh, ten times better than when they first threw it in the engine, just to um, to do voting for the final finalists. Yeah on uh, the uh, Starship contest. So, I mean, with what they did to it and went over with it, it looks even better. It's just amazing. Um, I love these engines. I, I don't know. Some people are pretty torn about the engine design and stuff. I think it makes the ship look very unique and it has sort of a unique profile, like side profile. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to flying this ship so badly. So let's go take a look inside. Try not to get squished by the ramp. That would, yeah, kind of suck. So here's your boarding area, basically. Whatever, land in station, pop the ramp. Or you have the docking collar right here um, for ship to ship boarding, assaults, whatever. Everything like that. Um, it seats six down here, so you can have six soldiers, pirates, marines, whatever. The seats actually don't work yet. Um, there's not much that's functional inside the ship besides doors, really. Um, but overall, I have to say, I do love the interior. Uh, uh, it's functional. It's sleek, but it's still utilitarian and military. So it's compact, uh, and the layout is fantastic. Um, this was one of my favorites for the Next Great Starship contest, and I'm really glad it, it's in engine, and it's <laughs> hopefully can fly it soon. I don't know how far away that is, but uh, hopefully sooner rather than later with a lot of the ships. Um, down here is where you access the lower tur turret, um, which doesn't work, obviously. I can't actually sit in there. It's a pretty cool little mechanism. I'll show you outside. You actually sit in here. I'm not sure if you know, you've seen the great Starship videos, but you sit in the seat and uh, a little almost tunnel chute like extends out to the turret and slides your seat in there and then retract again. So you can, you're sitting in the turret now and you can, you know, look around and everything like that. It's a pretty nifty little idea. Just the little things on the ship that I really like. Uh, obviously the detail is amazing because it was all pretty much fleshed out by the um, four horsemen team. So they have a lot of different things in there that some of the other SIG ships don't yet. Little details like um, illuminated door panels, things like that. Fire extinguishers, which, you know, important, I guess. So let's head upstairs. Uh, I'm going to save the cockpit for last. This is sort of the engineering section. Um, I think these are supposed to be shield generators or something. I'm not really sure completely what the specifics are. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head from... Uh, this the Starship contest, how they were explaining it, but you can see these little diagnostic screens, which look pretty damn cool. I mean, check that out. Oh, we're up here. We might as well check out the cockpit, which is uh, I really love this cockpit. It's 
I don't know. It's one of my favorites, I think, overall for what I've seen through the different ships I have. I mean, I love my Freelancer. It's a plucky little ship, but this cockpit is awesome. Um, the love the layout for the screens and the controls and everything, but the, the thing I really enjoy is the field of view. It's just fantastical, which you're going to need being a gunship, assault ship. So, a lot of view space up here. A lot of view space to enjoy the stars, or getting shot at, things like that. Um, yeah, but overall really, really cool ship. Really compact. So, uh, let's continue on to the living quarters. Because it's supposed to have a crew of five. You figure you have two gunners. The pilot, um, I'm not sure what else, honestly. I guess like a missile loader? I don't know if there's automated missile loader on it. I don't know if they worked out the specifics, which obviously specs are always in flux. That's the disclaimer. Um, so I'm not sure what the other two guys are. Maybe a minimum, like, boarding crew or whatever of, you know, two extra guys, three extra guys. I'm not really sure how they got to five. But, uh, I guess we'll find out. So here's sort of the galley area. You can't, again, you can't use any of the seats, sit down or anything like that. Um, it's like, oddly kind of dark. It, it's interesting because it's like, it, you get really get the military feel of the whole ship. You know, minimal lighting, functional, whatever we need, that's, you know, that's what we have. You've got the sink with the whole, I love the little hot and cold, like, panel on the, uh, I guess the faucet, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and this is the most important piece of the ship right here. Um, coffee pot, because, you know, you need coffee in space. Those long hauls, man, you're going to need space coffee. And then you have your bunks, which I believe double as uh, emergency uh, rescue pods. It looks like you have two of those. Maybe a spot for a third up here. I don't I don't know how that's going to work exactly. Um, and more panels and everything. I just I really love the screens in here and everything. Pretty sweet. And then you have other important, you know, basic quality of life things. A shower, which is important. It's kind of tight in here, but, you know, everybody needs a shower. And then, uh, you know, the porcelain throne, which doesn't look very porcelain, but you, you get the gist. And then finally, back here, um, I don't know what this is. I believe... I'm probably going to get corrected by someone in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe early on this was sort of sort of the little cargo area. There was a supposed to be a door here, which I think there is, where I can't really see because obviously the brightness is a little... I mean, it's very dark in this ship. Oh, excuse me. Um, but there was a door that opened here, like clamshelled, and there's a, a crane of some sort, so you can load extra cargo up here just a little bit. I mean, obviously it's not a huge space, but you figure maybe extra weapons for boarding or, I don't know, taking over a station or whatever, stuff like that. Or maybe some important cargo that you really want protected that you throw in a gunship full of guns and pirates or marines. So, I think that's what this is. I'm sure if it's wrong, I will be corrected and torn apart or whatever, but... That's basically the whole ship. It's not a huge ship. Again, it's very short trying to get out of that door, which I'm having a really hard time with. I'm not sure you're intended to hop through that easily. I think maybe it's more just a cargo access area. Um, yep, it's small and it's functional and to the point. Um, I really like it. I'm looking forward to it. This is sort of my combat shift since I have a reclaimer and a freelancer. So I'm looking forward to grabbing some of my buddies and go gunning around the universe. Um, I've also turned into some sort of Aegis Dynamics fanboy with the Reclaimer and the, the Redeemer. I was also tempted to get a Gladius as well, but I held off on that. That's the other ship that's on sale right now. Um, there's a concept sale going on with the Drake Herald, which is an information running ship. Which the concept sounds really cool. It's on my list of things to sort of branch out and check out when the Persistent Universe goes live. But I'm not going to buy into it now. I'm pretty set for now. Um, there's also the Gladius, which is a uh, sort of a fighter, a uh, dog fighting ship um, that looks pretty sweet. Commercial is out there, I believe. It debuted at PAX, so um, 
Oh man, so anyway, this is the Redeemer. I, I can't wait to fly it, even if they just throw it in there where you, you know, before multi-crew, just so you can get a hang of how it feels, how it flies. Because it looks to me, with uh, the way they listed uh, the large amount of thrusters on it, and the way the engines function, from just what we've heard and seen, it looks like it's going to be pretty damn maneuverable, even for a ship this size, so I'm just looking forward to testing it out in space, in some free flight, even. Um, let me pop out just so you get a idea of the size, how tall it sits and everything. But yeah, it's a very sweet looking ship. Um, and I might have some more ship tours in the future. I'm not, I'm not gonna never say never anymore because I said that last video and uh, I don't even have my cutlass anymore. But uh, thanks for watching guys and uh, definitely stay tuned because once multi-crew ships uh, come online sometime next year uh, and some of the plant side stuff, I'll definitely have more videos coming out showcasing that stuff and uh, maybe some streaming going on. Thanks for watching guys. Catch you later.